One thing that quickly becomes apparent during the first season of The Witcher is that Nilfgaard seems bad. We're losing! <laughs> We see the armies of the Nilfgaard Empire burn Sintra and slaughter its citizens, its mages engaged in dark rituals, and its agents, especially the sinister Cahir, pursuing Ciri ruthlessly, even going so far as to employ a Doppler. Do you not have errand boys where you come from? They lacked your valuable set of skills. So what's up with Nilfgaard? Are they as bad as they appear? Or is there more to this still rather mysterious empire that we're not seeing? The answer is, of course, a bit of both. The world of The Witcher is a morally complex place where there are two sides to almost every story and absolutes are rare, even when it comes to burning and torturing. So what do we know about Nilfgaard? Nilfgaard is a vast empire in the south of the continent, the large landmass on which the stories of The Witcher unfold. Sintra is indeed the jewel of the north. Yet Nilfgaard remains a shit rag of the South, and that's saying something. <laughs> in the original books, and so far in the show too, most of these stories take place in the North, among the fragile alliances and fractious intrigue of various competing kingdoms, like Temeria, ruled by King Foltest, Redania, and Aden, where we see Yennefersent following her training at Artusa. Well, what sort of a king refuses a dance with one of his subjects? So, while there's a little more to learn about Nilfgaard from the books, even there they're seen as outsiders. They are the invading force, and we see events from the perspective of the invaded, as when Yaskia describes the coming war before the fall of Sintra in the short story Something More. There's never been a war like this, the bard said gravely. The Nilfgaard army are leaving scorched earth and bodies behind them, entire fields of corpses. This is a war of destruction, total destruction. Nilfgaard against everyone. This kind of reaction is common in the books. A travelling priest in the blood of elves warns a crowd of northerners to remember the Nilfgaard are our punishment from the gods. They are the whip with which the immortals will lash you sinners. And they're sometimes referred to as the Black Forces, a forbidding name which is only partly a reference to their dark armour. Behind these scare stories though is perhaps a more mundane political reality. In Blood of Elves, Geralt's fellow witcher Lambert reacts to the Nilfgaardian invasion and the history of trouble between the Empire and the Northern Kingdoms more casually. So what, said Lambert, they've been hitting, killing and striking against each other constantly for hundreds of years, it's nothing to worry about. Also remember that in episode 3 of The Witcher, the Brotherhood of Sorcerers are more concerned with reigning in the unruly kingdom of Sintra than they are with the slumbering power of Nilfgaard, which at this time is still ruled by somebody called Fergus. How fares Nilfgaard? King Fergus is proving to be an effective and excitable young king. Hornish, he means. And he's spending the kingdom's money on women as his people starve to death. The truth about Nilfgaard probably lies somewhere in the middle. Andrzej Sapkowski based the expansionist empire on the Romans, and perhaps some commentators have suggested also the Soviet Russians. Nilfgaard grows through conquest, turning vanquished enemies into provinces and vassal states. The climactic battle at Sodden was just the end of a longer campaign during which the Nilfgaard had advanced across your lands like an iron roller, strewing the land between Marnadal and Trans River with the corpses of many a gallant fellow. While their armies might be ruthless, there's plenty of evidence in the books that Nilfgaard's enemies can be just as cruel given the opportunity. And perhaps because of the Empire's early connection with the Elder Folk, Nilfgaard has a more accepting approach to non-humans, especially elves, when compared to their neighbours from the north. My elders worked with humans and got robbed of all they had. So they might not be evil, or at least no more evil than anyone else, but that doesn't explain why Nilfgaard invaded Sintra in the first place. What changed between the time of Fergus and that relaxed meeting of the Brotherhood to the burning of Sintra and the slaughter of its people? The reason has been hinted at in the show through prophecy and mysterious language, and particularly in this scene where Nilfgaard mage Fringilla reminds a downcast Cahir about the importance of their mission. You rose up against the usurper, helped free our people from their chains. I witnessed the white flame call on you, mold you, anoint you. It burns in you, Cahir. She 
she is the key. But you, you are the commissioner. Do not despair. We will find her and we will spread his supremacy all through the kingdoms, whether they deserve it or not. The events and meanings behind this moment will likely form the foundations of the story as the show continues. So in other words, you'll have to wait. The Witcher is available to watch on Netflix right now. For more on The Witcher, other Netflix originals and loads more, subscribe to the channel. The time of the sword and the axe is nigh.